air travel in America sure feels like it's in a state of chaos, y'all. I mean, the delays and the cancellations, they just seem endless. And I'm not gonna lie, I have my own fair share of stories, and I think I join countless other travelers who are just frustrated that nothing seems to be getting better. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders wrote a letter to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg asking him to use his authority to take immediate action and hold airlines more accountable to you, the consumer. Now, Sanders urged Buttigieg to require airlines to refund passengers for flights that are delayed more than an hour. And that was just one suggestion. So I'm joined now by two people who can testify firsthand to what a living hell travel delays can cause. First Officer David Adler is a Delta Airlines pilot and also the secretary and spokesperson for Delta's Pilots Union, the Airline Pilots Associations International. And Sarah Nelson is here. She is the president of the Association of Flight Attendants, CWA. Greetings to you both. I cannot think of two better people to tell us what the hell is going on out there. So Sarah, <laughs> I want to start with you. In Senator Sanders' letter to Secretary Buttigieg, he did call for very hefty fines, okay, for airlines that schedule flights that don't have proper staffing. Here, here's my question, because if I am someone sitting at home, how the heck does that happen? How do you schedule a flight with no one or not enough staff to fly? Well, look, I think that what Senator Sanders is trying to do is to encourage the airlines to get with it and really get serious about dealing with the operation. And um, we absolutely need the airlines to do that. Uh, one of the things that we needed them to do was to not overpromise. As they're coming out of the pandemic and trying to compete with other airlines, uh, they, they really put too much capacity, more than we could handle, into the system. And what that did was it brought people to the airports, uh, which makes it very difficult then. Once they're at the airports and you got to get them onto another flight or something else. If something goes wrong with their flights, it makes it very, very difficult. Um, but the staffing on the back end is very bad as well. Uh, the staffing, uh, of course, with all of us on the front lines, you may know about that. And that was a problem pre-pandemic when they pushed us down to minimum staffing levels. So there's no give mm -hmm. in the operation. But they also are having problems with supporting the operation. So we have crew members who are waiting one, two, three, four hours online uh, to get a reassignment when something goes wrong with their trip. And what that means is that the customers, the passengers, are also waiting for that crew member to get a reassignment to get to a flight, to crew that flight to get it out. Um, so there, there has been all, all of the operations across the board at the airlines have been cut to the bare minimum. The airlines need to get staffing up. They need to get through contract negotiations so that we can have good jobs to attract people to these jobs, get them into the system. There's some things that they can do right now to support the system, but there's also things they need to do long-term to attract people to these jobs and staff up. Okay, so David, you are a Delta pilot, okay? And we know that pilots were, were picketing on June 30th all over the country. It's this point that Sarah just made. And I know in the, in the, in the picketing, um, they carried signs saying things like, ready to strike. Those are very strong words. And I, I just wonder, what has travel chaos been like for you and your colleagues? As a consumer, I know what it's been like for me, treacherous, honey. But I, I could imagine that for the pilots and also flight attendants, it's a whole nother level of hell. Well, our pilots are very frustrated right now. Uh, we're flying record numbers of uh, overtime right now. We've flown more overtime the first six months of this year than calendar year 2018 and 2019 combined. So we, we feel the frustration as do our passengers. Uh, we're having issues at Delta. We've expressed those uh, those issues and those frustrations to the Delta Airlines Board of Directors. We have sent them a letter uh, voicing our no confidence in Delta management with the, with the current situation. As long-term stakeholders and frontline workers, we, we absolutely empathize and sympathize with our passengers. We're not happy about what's going on either. But what can we do? I mean, Sarah, we talked about um, uh, Senator Sanders' letter earlier, and in that letter, he talks about uh, the money that was given to the airlines. We know that it wasn't just the pilots who were on the front lines in this strike, uh, on the picketing line. There were non-union um, Delta flight attendants who were there. Um, yeah. We often hear, you're talking about staffing. This is the word I've continued to hear throughout this conversation. Airlines mm -hmm. took over a billion dollars, okay, of federal money that was supposed to do things like maintain staffing, uh, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just for during the pandemic. Where did the money go? 
So that was a workers first program. And the one thing that I would say about it is it did put some controls on the executives. Um, they should have been planning better for this outcome and they shouldn't have pushed as many people out the door. Um, but there was a lapse in funding and um, that was also a problem here. But what we, the controls that we did a put lapse on in the funding executives, from, Sarah, a lapse I'm sorry, in funding a lapse from October in, yes. 2020 to December 2020, and that caused a lot of furloughs. It also encouraged the airlines to push more people out the door. Mm. If we had had consistent funding from Congress, that would have worked better. Um, if we didn't have this program in place at all, uh, we would be in a much worse place. But here's what I want to focus on. Be Pre-pandemic, the airlines were giving out $13 billion in the few years preceding uh, the pandemic to in, in share buybacks and stock buybacks. And um, on September 30th, the control on not being able to do that will be lifted. So the airlines will be able to do that again. What they were doing was cutting staffing, cutting the operation to the bare bones right before the pandemic, and then continued to push people out the door through the pandemic. And if they start giving uh, stock buybacks to the shareholders, instead of reinvesting in the employees, in the infrastructure, or in the operation, we're going to have continued problems here. So what we really want to do is push them to make changes now while they can still be putting all their profits back into the operation, into the contract negotiations, into supporting the workers on the front lines and not having that go to Wall Street. And so this is the one thing that's good about that program, Simone, that Senator Sanders, of course, would want to lift up to and was part of getting in place. So, David, I'm going to give the last comment to you here. The reality is people need to fly, OK? We cannot take a train everywhere we need to go. We got to get on that plane. And passengers, frankly, are a captive audience. So is Senator Sanders right? Is finding the airlines the actual answer here? I can't speak to whether Senator, uh, Senator Sanders is right or not. I can speak to as far as a Delta Airlines. What we need to do here is we need to schedule in a more orderly fashion. All right. We need to make sure that we're scheduling to the staffing levels. And that is our problem here at Delta Airlines. Uh, we've, like I said, we've mentioned this to our management many, many times. One, one thing that we can do as far as, uh, you know, whether it's the pilots or flight attendants, is to make sure that we have industry-leading contracts. We're currently in negotiations. Those industry-leading contracts will go ahead and drive more people to want to do work for the airlines in these positions. And that'll be better for our long-term success. So that's what I'd like to see that happen. All right. Amen David Adler. David. <laughs> David Adler, Sarah Nelson, we're going to stay on this because, dang it, I am tired of what is going on in the airport. So I am one consumer that's going to keep talking about this story. Thank you both for your time today. We want to help you out, Simone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>